Senator Gillibrand, good morning, and thank you for joining us on Picks on Politics. How are you today? I'm very well, thank you. Great to see you. Let's begin with the World Trade Center Health Program. This would provide necessary, vital health care to more than 117,000 September 11th responders and survivors, people who were exposed to deadly toxins at Ground Zero. This week, you asked Congress to pass $3 billion in funding for the program. So my question is, have federal lawmakers stalled in getting help to the September 11th community? Well, we are working to try to include this uh, funding. It's about $3 billion uh, in the next reconciliation package that Senator Schumer is negotiating right now with Senator Manchin. This money pays for vital health care for our first responders and the families at Ground Zero who breathed in toxins that created horrible cancers and other very bad um, illnesses. And so we want to make sure that this fund is fully funded. Uh, the problem is that the inflation rate of health care is higher than expected. And so this is the gap that we need to fill. And Senator, you just mentioned inflation. I have a question about that as well. Economists are now saying that inflation is even making homelessness worse here in New York City. And since the lifting of the state's pandemic era eviction moratorium, thousands of New Yorkers have lost their homes. So is there anything that you're working on in Washington that might help bring a little bit of financial relief for New Yorkers? Anything that might help people afford to be able to stay in their homes? Well, you've touched on the biggest challenge we have in the state and really across the country, affordable housing. There's not enough affordable housing in New York City. There's not enough affordable housing in rural areas, in the Hudson Valley, in every community I visit, it's an issue. And so I have a, a, a bill with a number of other senators to fund um, more building of affordable housing to make sure it is universally accessible. Uh, however, that is just a Democrat-only bill at this point, so we need to find more bipartisan support from Republicans about building affordable housing. Um, we can also work with our state and our city to uh, put more funds forward to meet those needs. Uh, we also are you know, still debating whether we could have maybe one more COVID relief bill, one more bill to ease the horrible impacts COVID's had on families and businesses and communities. Uh, and I don't know if we have the bipartisan support for that either. And so a lot of these issues, we just have to keep advocating for them, lifting up the families and their stories so that we can convince Republicans that these are priorities. One more COVID relief bill. Any indication on what that might include at this point, or is that still all under negotiation? So there's two, there's two ways to get more resources into our state and into our communities. Uh, the first is this opportunity to have one more reconciliation bill. That's a term of art that is used by the majority to pass a financial related bill. This could include lowering the cost of prescription drugs like insulin. It could also include lowering energy costs for air conditioning and heating in the winter. Uh, those two provisions are being debated and, and negotiated right now. So if we could lower people's costs for health care and heating and energy costs, that will make a huge difference for people's ability to put food on the table, provide for their children, and stay in their homes. And so that one piece is, is one. And the second would be um, dealing with the fact that uh, we had a lot of COVID relief policies that are set to expire, and there'll be an effort to try to maintain those supports. So whether it's support to defray housing costs, whether it's support to defray health care costs, uh, these are things we put in place during COVID because people lost their jobs or in their ability to work. And so we wanted to make sure families weren't going homeless and weren't going hungry. And so we're just going to try to push those waivers. We have a lot of different programs um, that I've talked about around the state, like access to child care, access to summer meals, uh, access to the support that families need. And Senator Gillibrand, I also want to speak for a bit about gun violence. New York lawmakers recently passed new state gun control laws after the Supreme Court ruled against the state's concealed carry law. But much of the gun violence in New York, it's still driven by illegal guns smuggled in from other states. So do you expect any further federal action? And can that even happen with the current political climate in Washington? 
Absolutely. So the bipartisan bill that we just signed into law included my gun trafficking legislation. It creates federal penalties for gun traffickers and straw purchasers who Hello? bring these illegal weapons into our state and sell them directly Hi. to criminals. This bill in its entirety was included. And so I've already met with the head of the ATF for New York and told him that he needs to start prosecutions now of gun traffickers. Uh, I've already briefed the governor uh, and I've talked to the mayor and briefed uh, his head um, and his police commissioner to begin to do these prosecutions. Uh, this is a way we can stem the flow of gun death and gun violence in our state and it will help uh, the whole country uh, at large because a lot of gun crimes are committed by criminals who do not get a background check and just get the weapons illegally through straw purchasers and through trafficking. And let's turn to another concern for New Yorkers, public transit. The state is getting millions of dollars from the Biden infrastructure bill, but congestion pricing will soon be taking more money out of commuters' wallets to be put back into the city's transit system. Do you have any knowledge of how all this money will actually be enhancing New York's transit systems rather than funding sort of more Band-Aid solutions that will just end up being replaced five years from now or so? So, um, I don't know where the governor or the mayor will put that money from congestion pricing, but I do know that the mayor and the governor are working very hard to invest in transportation infrastructure. We want to continue to fund our subways. Uh, we want to continue to fund roads and bridges. Um, there's enormous congestion um, coming in and out of Long Island, so we still need more rail. Uh, and more roadway work. Uh, we also need to fix a lot of the backlog necessities for Amtrak. Uh, so there's a lot of work and in infrastructure to do. And because we passed this bipartisan infrastructure, New York's getting billions of dollars they wouldn't have gotten otherwise to invest specifically in fixing our transportation infrastructure. There's a lot of money also for mass transit, so that's our subway systems. And so we want to continue to invest in that, uh, the Gateway and, Tunnel, and, uh, as well as other major infrastructure throughout the state. Uh, so I'm optimistic that the mayor and the governor do have the resources they need Senator and will make the right judgments on where to invest that money. Senator, thank you so much for your time. We greatly appreciate you joining us today. Thank you.